Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about how to improve the Plex Media Server performance on your brand new Synology DS220 Plus. This is the fourth video of this kind that I've done with the new range of Synology NASes and even though it would have been a lot, lot, lot easier to just make one video that covered them all, I know a number of you out there kept requesting a video for each specific unit just to see the results more so than anything. So. Today I'm going to show you how to change the default driver on your DS220 Plus from the iHD driver that Plex utilizes to another driver inside called the i965 driver. You're not going to have to do any mucking around with backend SSL or mucking around with SQL tables or any of that crap in the background. What you're going to have to do is have two simple tools ready to go. The first thing you're going to need is Plex Media Server. I know, no brainer, right? If you haven't already done it, please install Plex Media Server, set it up, create your account, bung your media in, do everything you need to do to get the metadata scraped and ultimately have Plex good to go. Chances are you've already done that and you've suffered difficulties playing back Plex and you've had performance problems and therefore you're utilizing this today to improve your Plex Media performance more precisely with H.265 and 10-bit HDR content, which is a real struggle on um, Plex on this CPU. And it's nothing to do with Synology or QN Operator Store or any other brands that are utilizing this processor. It's because this version of Plex and all the ones afterwards forced the system to use what I would argue is the wrong driver. But once again, make sure you've got Plex Media Server already good to go and set up. Have it opened up as I've done on the right hand side of the screen here. And as you can see, we've got CPU bandwidth and the memory being utilized. On top of that, make sure you've got another tool installed, a Synology tool called the text editor. It's completely free and you don't even have to open it. Just install the tool and that's all you need to do. Once you've got those installed, the next thing you need to do is get ready to do some playing around. You're going to have to make a note of this on screen. And again, let's open that up. Let's get that a little bit bigger so you can all see that at home. Let's go nice and large there. You need this line of command. And again, there should be available in the description or the link to NAS compares, which will have this article and the text for you to just copy and paste. And before we go any further, let me show you an example of the performance differences. I'm going to do a before bit now. And as you can see here on the other camera, and again, this is why the sound quality is a little bit wavy. I've got a three screen, two mic setup here, and I'm quite close to the NAS. But as you can see here on screen, I've got lots of 4K and 1080p test files on my DS220+. Plus. Now, what we're going to do is get these listed by name. And you might notice by the name, each one of them has a certain codec. There's H.264, which is the older compression technique of media, and HEVC, otherwise known as H.265. Now, this codec here is the one that all the problem revolves around, because H.265, although the more modern and more efficient compression technique to get bigger quality files of 1080p and 4K to a smaller size, and playback, this version of Plex does not play well with this CPU. Same goes for 10-bit, where 10-bit, otherwise known as HDR, in combination with H.265 or HEVC, ultimately leads to files that this NAS just cannot play with that driver. And remember, it's not just about playback, it's about transcoding and the system being able to alter the file to a more playable standard. Let me show you. H.264, if we play back that file now, should play back with no difficulties whatsoever. It's playing the file back. This is a 30 second test file and it's playing back in the original 3 megabits 1080p H.264 file type. It plays absolutely fine. The same file that's actually smaller in size is the H.265 version. Same file, same bit rate, same 1080p and the system hangs. It's beginning to try to do transcoding. It's going to convert the file, but it is going to have a real run time. We've already seen that pixelation there on screen, which is pretty appalling. And then on top of that, it didn't even finish playing. If we try to play the 10, 10 bit 10, um, H.265 1080p 3 megabits per second version, this one will be maybe not quite as bad, but bad enough. It's going to be pixelated and it will barely buffer faster than what you see on screen. 
and as you can see we've got horrible effects happening there no playback whatsoever if we go down to the bottom we can see it's trying to convert it and it's just it's just not able to do it it's just going to hang we can see at the bottom the buffering is up to 18 seconds and if we look at the display here on the dashboard we can see that the cpu and memory is still not maxed out but the file's not playing and this is because this isn't a question of power we've got loads of memory we've got loads of cpu power it's just that driver is not suitable for this playback and to put that into perspective if we scroll down to the 30 megabits per second h264 version the codec that this system can play back if we scroll down it's able to play it and if we go into our plex media server folder here on the ds220 and we have a look at that video file inside we can see that the file we're playing now the 30 megabits per second version is way bigger if we look at that version it's 100 and six megabytes yet the files we've been now unable to play are just 10 megabytes in size it really is the driver that's the problem here so in order to get around this what we need to do is force plex to use a different driver the i965 driver before you go any further do bear in mind that you better have a backup or two in place not because what you're about to do is particularly risky it really isn't but you never know so make sure your data is backed up particularly your media files before you play around so first thing we need to do is head back into the package center and find plex once you've found plex here click on the plex icon click the drop down and click stop this will halt the plex media server it will suspend it and shut it down because what we're about to do is change some of the back end of plex and we don't want plex to be running in the background because it may invalidate the changes we're about to make as you can see on screen it signed us out of the 220 plus both on my screen of dashboard and there on the phone the next thing we need to do is head into file station now from file station once you've installed plex a new folder will appear just called plex head into that folder and there'll be another folder called library let's zoom in a little bit this new file library go into library then into application support then into plex media server and scroll to the bottom where it says preferences double click the preferences uh, tab and the text editor will open up now what you need to do is head all the way to the end and go to this icon here slash and then arrow or greater less than highlight that icon and then get that code that i showed you earlier now this code here is what you're going to need make sure there's a space at the beginning or you can add one on here later drag over and copy and remember this should be in the description and or the nas compare link in the description so you can copy and paste from it go into the text editor and paste that bit of text over the end so highlight over it right click paste make sure you've got that space before vapi driver equals quotation mark i965 quotation mark space slash arrow the spaces are very important once you've done that head into file and click save once you've clicked save that will now ensure that you've got you've told plex to go for a different driver available so from here you may see that now it's updated that file for plex for me we can minimize that go back into the package center and click run under plex media server now the plex media server is now going to restart when it starts the amount of time this takes will be heavily dependent on your system how much memory you've got how much memory is being used how much cpu power you've got available and how big your library is but plex should take anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute but more powerful and top end nazis will knock this out very quickly indeed once this is done it should take no more than a couple of minutes as you can see we're starting to re-establish connection your plex media server will be ready to access as you can see here on screen 
From here, what we need to do is test that what we've done has worked. So let's highlight the bandwidth, and this is the size of the files we're playing back, the CPU, and the memory. Let's make our way over to the laptop here and play back some of those files we had difficulty with. So, first, there's H265 or HEVC 3 meg file. We click play, and once again, it will need to transcode, as you can see, but it now plays back sweet as a nut. It's now able to play back H265. Again, you can see at the bottom, the buffering is well outweighed that of the playback. And again, we can go to the 10-bit media. From there, we click play of the 10-bit H265 file. Again, it's going to transcode there at the bottom. And when it transcodes, all it's doing is lowering the bit rate, the tiniest bit. It's still 1080p and it's still high quality with the buffering far outweighing the playback. Now, if we move back into these files and folders, we can carry on going a little higher. The 10 megabits per second H265 file. Now, it's worth bearing in mind, what we're doing today does allow Plex Media Server to take advantage of the transcoding performance of the CPU in the DS220 Plus. But you have to bear in mind that this NAS is still not designed for 4K. If you're someone that was looking for top-end Plex Media Server playback, the Celeron processor in this NAS is not suitable. And therefore, you should be looking at an i3, i5, or maybe an i7, even a Pentium. Because once we start looking at some real high-end media, such as 30 frames per second H.265, it becomes alarmingly apparent that the buffering at the bottom of the screen is not going to outpace the playback. We're going to just get away with it, perhaps, on this 30 megabits per second, but there's no avoiding that the CPU, bandwidth, and memory are pushed as we go to higher quantities of H.265 at 1080p. But this one looks like it'll be fine. But the minute we go to 100 megabits, this is where we start to see the problems. And this is, again, what we're doing today is to show you how to improve the performance of your Plex Media Server DS220 Plus from Synology. But this isn't a miracle cure. If you want to play back real, real high-end 1080p or real, real high-end 4K, this is not going to do it for you. Even now, we can see the system having difficulty. But it's worth highlighting that the driver change does implement improvements on H.264 as well. But 4K will still be just out of reach. This is an H.264 4K file. As you can see, it's having difficulty playing. It will try to play, but the buffering is just not quite fast enough, with the CPU on screen there starting to already hit some heights. If we try to go for a transcoding, it will give it a jolly good try, but I very much doubt we'll see true results. And ultimately, although today's fix will improve the Plex Media Server performance of H.265 and some HDR media on your NAS, it has to be highlighted that this is still not a NAS for top-end Plex Media Server use. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Look at that. I even managed to play back that file. Got to be impressed by that. Do check out my other videos on Plex Media Server. And of course, if you do want to learn more, do visit me at NAS Compares in the description. There's a link in the description. There's a guide to everything we've gone through today. Let's go for um, the top end. There's no way this is going to play, but let's give it a go. I'm going to leave that there on screen. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, there's going to be lots more videos like this, and I am tackling QNAP next. Now I've gone through all of the Synologies. I'm not sure what order I'm going to publish these Synology videos in yet, but I should know very soon. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. It looks like that file is definitely not going to play. And I will see you next time.